On May 14, 2008, a perplexing and enigmatic 20-second clip supposedly depicting a disc-shaped UFO moving alongside a jet appeared out of the blue on YouTube. This video was uploaded by a long-dead channel titled Danny Lampkin. In the video description, Lampkin says one simple sentence, quote, I'm not too sure about this one, but I thought I would download it anyway for you to decide. Okay, I can probably guess what you're thinking right now. This video is far too fantastic to be true. The quality is garbage. This is bad CGI or just a model on a string. But this footage is far more complex and scintillating than initially meets the eye. Let's dive in and try to determine the authenticity of the flyby UFO footage. Guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, UAP Gerb. Let's dive right into this today because I want to dissect one of my favorite pieces of UFO footage that has kept me pondering for the better part of a decade, the flyby footage. If this footage is the real deal, it is the best example of a closely filmed UFO encounter in the entire public realm. Former ATIP director Lou Elizondo once stated there is UFO footage leaked to the public realm that he was shocked had not broken global news. We can only assume this footage has been seen but labeled fake or skipped over by the UFO community and internet at large. During an interview with GQ in 2021, when asked about the Gimbal, GoFast, and UFO Pentagon videos, Lou stated that these three videos were some of the least compelling out there and that, quote, there's videos out there in government that the public haven't seen yet. There's one that's 23 minutes long. There's another one where this thing is 50 feet away from the cockpit. I mean, it ain't ours. We know that. Sometimes you just couldn't believe it. We're 99% sure it's not foreign adversarial technology. So that only leaves really one, one other option. It's, it's someone or something else. Are these three videos the only videos that you know of that the United States government has that shows unidentified aerial phenomenon? No, absolutely not. These are probably some of the least compelling videos. In some cases, you know, we, we've seen these things 50 feet away from the cockpit. On a Joe Rogan experience appearance, Christopher Mellon, the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, Staff Director of the Senate Intelligence Committee, stated he had seen footage of a UAP right next to a pilot. I'm not sure if this is the same footage Lou is referencing, but I am 100% positive the footage Mellon was referring to is not the flyby footage. But we are now faced with the mind-melting fact there are real instances of UFOs traveling within 15 meters of aircraft. So let's start to break down this clip. I can only trace this case back to around April of 2008 where it was posted on the ufochronicles.com titled, quote, Flying Saucer UFO Filmed from Jet Window? The video then began popping up onto YouTube around May 2008. Unfortunately, I cannot find any record of this clip before April of 08, so this is where our trail starts. At a brief glance, we can see this video is certainly under 240p, but what we are actually looking at is a recording of a screen, meaning someone recorded the original footage playing on a computer screen, so this is a second generation recording. If we look closely, we can see the reflection of equipment. One possibility is the reflection of the camera utilized to record the camera screen. More likely, however, these are reflections of possible objects within the plane's cockpit reflecting against the glass. This would likely be a camcorder positioned inside the cockpit with possible additional reflective catches of a Gentex MBU-23P pilot respirator mask. Following these possibilities, we must now consider this footage is taken from inside a military jet and not commercial airliner. Well, one such craft exists that has an interior mounted camera. 
The NASA F-18 variant, the NASA Chase F-18A. As seen here, the jet has a mounted camcorder behind the pilot seat, able to film starboard or port side without obstruction. In our video, we see what looks to be a jet wing filmed port side with empty missile wingtip pylons. Take a look at this cockpit view of an F-A-18 Super Hornet. The wing angle matches and so do the wingtip pylons. Okay, what about the audio of this footage? We can hear a loud muffling noise and possibly human voices within the video. I see two possibilities here. One, the footage features original sound recorded from the pilot, played back on a device, and re-recorded from the secondary camera recording the computer screen. The audio could be pure or combined with ambient background noise from the computer recording. Or two, ambient sounds from the screen recording location. Speculating on possibility two, the audio sounds extremely similar to the 2019 U.S. Navy filmed spherical-shaped UFO object going into water, posted by Jeremy Corbell, featuring ambient sounds from the USS Nimitz. Check out this comparison. Took off. Spoken it. To think about possibility one, here's the ambient noise inside the cockpit of an F-A-18 Super Hornet and our footage. As one Reddit user pointed out, the audio waveform does not cut at second four of our video where there is a footage cut leading credence to the possibility that whatever we hear is in fact ambient noise of a ship where the screen recording was captured. Lastly, audio-wise, you might be able to hear faint voices in the background. This same Reddit user attempted to isolate the voices and here is what they came up with. I cannot even begin to guess what is being said. However, this does appear to be a female voice. Quickly, I wanted to brush over the craft depicted in this video. This UFO is almost identical to the saucer-shaped craft as described by Lieutenant Jacobs in his warhead shootdown footage. This craft also appears to be extremely similar to some of the most famous UFO photographs ever taken, the McMinnville photos. Notice the protrusion on top of the craft, which as described by Jacobs, is similar to half of a ping pong ball. This same upper protrusion is also seen in the McMinnville images. The craft here also flies at an angle, something seen in numerous saucer images and descriptions of saucer encounters. Controversial as he is, even Bob Lazar claimed the disc-shaped craft fly, quote, belly towards their destination. Oh, oh boy, here we go. Lastly, I want to talk about the most enigmatic connection to this case. In 2021 or 22, an alleged leaked classified military communications log made its way around the internet including a post on the ever-famous 4chan. Now, everything from 4chan must be taken with a grain of salt, but these leaked comms are purportedly a page of a longer classified version of a UAP task force report prepared for Congress. Let's break down this comms log. The log details the cockpit voice recording of a fighter aircraft Club 1-1 during an interception directed by AWACS. Airborne Warning and Control System, call sign Brigham, which serves as a flying, long-range radar and command center that provides tactical command services to units in their network. 
Think of Eyes in the Sky for fighter units. And lastly, BLK. Unclear what this is, they do not identify themselves, but they use NATO brevity language. The fighter is crewed by a pilot, PC, and weapon system operator, WSO, sitting in the back and managing some systems. Think back to the NASA Chase F-18A, the dual-seater. BLK is guiding them to intercept a bogey seen on radar. The fighter can't see this bogey initially, but at some point the WSO catches it in his radar and tells the pilot it's coming at them at 2,820 knots. Electronic countermeasures are activated and the crew is alerted that a missile has been launched at them or that they are being actively tracked by radar. This could have been done manually or automatic. The bogey gets so close that from BLK's point of view, both contacts quote, merge, meaning they are overlapping at the current resolution and the fighter's crew have had no visual contact yet. They declare the target as quote, bogey dope. When the crew confirms that they see nothing, they ask for further instructions from BLK who tells them to stand by. The crew then see an object on the starboard wing, quote, hanging out about 10 to 15 feet from the canopy. The pilot is shocked. However, BLK tells them not to change velocity or vector. BLK tells the crew to, quote, open your blue envelopes and snooze, essentially telling the crew to confirm their weapons are off and then to open an envelope and proceed with briefed mission control procedures, which may include radio silence or channel changes. The described events in this comms log line up almost exactly with the bogey seen off the starboard wing of our FA-18 in our video, does it not? But is this document real? And does it describe our flyby sighting? Our footage's connection to this comms log starts to dive into a deep rabbit hole. And stay with me here. If this is indeed an online LARP, it was constructed by someone who is very familiar with pilot lingo. As we talked about, this page is purportedly a leaked page from an appendix of the longer classified version of the UAP task force report. Look at the top of this page, appendix F4B.13 from page 508. Well, there is another alleged page from this leaked document. Section five, behavioral data analysis details 1,292 UFO cases by the joint elements of ONI, NSA, DHS, and SAP cleared experts by the DOD. What is absolutely insane about this document are the conclusions presented on this page that some UA slash SP unidentified aerial slash submerged phenomena. This, in my opinion, gives a little credence to the document, giving the distinction between aerial and submerged. But anyways, that these conclusions result that UAP are either remote or autonomous drones or a form of mechanical life. This document asserts that an quote, organic species has been deploying UA slash SP that have seen a rapid increase in flight performance indicating a quote, stepped virtual evolution process. According to one mentioned Shiba Koya, Gradual changes in the UASP appearance and behavior highlight generational changes. I have done an exhausting search into the names mentioned on this page, M. Harmon, S. McCarran, and K. Shibakoya, and the quote, blackout flower report, and quote, layer three behavioral assessment. But I have found almost nothing. We have to assume these are pseudonyms used or first names of these people removed entirely. My only luck has been able to find one Hillary S. McCarran, whose LinkedIn page features her as a research neuroscientist at the US Army Medical Research Institute of Chemical Defense. As a neuroscientist, her hand featured on a page allegedly studying UFO behavior fits. I'll be doing more investigation here, but Guys, if I am disappeared, you know why. At the bottom of the page featuring the names and reports, look at Appendix F, Section 4B, titled DOD 1992-2017 through 2017 High Value Witness Interviews. Real or faked, our comms log is featured in this Section 5 Behavioral Data Analysis. 
These are both featured in the same allegedly leaked document. The latest contribution to this report was from Kei Shibakoya in 2020, and during this time, the UAP task force was still running, 2017 to 22. So possibly this is an internal report from the UAP task force. Could this alleged report be true and subsequent appendix com log detail our flyby footage as a quote high value witness testimony? If so, that makes our flyby footage one of the most crucial pieces of UFO footage ever taken. But still, this footage remains so anomalous. What's up guys, it's UAP Gerb. Thank you for joining me today. Look, I'm sorry I'm a little bit disheveled. I just got back from training, but I wanted to wrap this video up and see what you guys think about this flyby case. I wanted to take a quick break from some of our more documentary style fact analysis and do a little speculation, but you know with me, we don't just speculate. We try to break everything down. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a CGI expert. I have no experience in um, any sort of CGI or much kind of in-depth video editing. So if you do, and you can perform an analysis on this flyby footage, uh, try to determine if in fact this video has some sort of CGI, some clipping, some differential frame rates between the object and the ambient picture, get in contact with me at uapgerb at gmail.com and let me know. And maybe you and I can make a part two to this case and crisp it up because as it stands right now, this case is incredibly anomalous. And as you've seen, there's a pretty wild rabbit hole behind this case, especially with the supposed UAPTF leak document. So let me know what you think about this case. I know the footage seems a little too good to be true, but at the end of the day, we don't know if it is. Very well could be. So thank you for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought, and I will catch you guys next time.